Today uh, we're going to be looking at hope. Um, We're going to start with a prayer, a few songs, and then a little reading and looking at the word hope. Uh, Then we'll have a few more songs and then Willie will speak uh, via the wonders of technology. Um, So let's start with a prayer. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you that um, we are here today meeting with you. Uh, in this building, but also um, in, in spirit as well. We thank you that our hope is firmly rooted in you, and because of that we can experience a joy um, that is beyond measure. We pray that uh, today, as Wally speaks on the topic of hope, Lord, that um, those who do not have their hope in you um, will start to um, think about what you can give them, what hope you've given uh, to those who already know you. And Lord, we pray that um, it will reach out to their hearts. In Jesus' name, uh, amen. So let's start with the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Right then, we are going to light all of our candles on the wreath today, uh, as we didn't get to do it <clears throat> uh, on Christmas Day. And I wondered if, uh, while we light the candles, if one or two of us would just pray, um, giving thanks to Jesus, but also um, maybe praying about our hope that we have in him. So I'll just go and light the candles and one or two of us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the hope that we have because you have forgiven our sins and you have promised to take us to be with yourself. And Lord, we do thank you that you are also the light of the world. And Lord, in dark times, we thank you that we can put our trust in you and that you will lighten the dark times. We pray for all, Lord, who are going through dark times today and in the coming days, that you will just draw near to them. And may they turn to you and may they find their hope in you. And we give you thanks in your name. Amen. Father, we thank you that you are a, a God of great faithfulness. Because of that, we can hope in you. So Father, help us in this day and in this coming year to trust you and to look to see your good hand upon us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you as some have prayed that you are the light of the world and that when we have our trust and hope in you, uh, we drive out all darkness uh, in our lives, fear, anxieties, when you are firmly rooted in our lives. And we thank you for that truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, on that note, let's sing our next song, Joy to the World.
no Bruce Forsyth tunes today, but we will be going on to a little, um, I don't want to say presentation, it sounds a bit naff, but presentation about hope. Um, so, Jonathan, let's get the little slide up. When I do that, that means click. Um, so I'll do that one. Uh, we'll be looking today at how our hope can be compared to a helmet or hat. Um, so then, the text I've used uh, from the Bible, because there are loads and I could have chosen all of them perhaps, but I've gone to 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. Let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armour of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the hope of salvation. What an odd phrase perhaps. But we know in Ephesians you wear that full armour. Um, so then, what is hope? Well, firstly, it's a fruit of the Spirit. So everyone who's a Christian um, and has their hope in Jesus should display some form of hope. And we should be able to see that. We should be able to see hope. Next, what is hope? Well, it means to wait for, or expect in expectancy and patient, patience. Um, so it's also something that we have to wait for. Um, next one. Hope that is seen or already acquired is not a real hope. And that's in Romans 8.24, which I found quite interesting. So if we already have and have obtained it, it's not real hope. So that must mean it's something that we're still waiting for, I wonder. Uh, next slide then. Um, now I have a question for everyone. Christine, what is the Koine Greek for hope? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not really. <laughs> um, what uses has a helmet or a hat? Protection. Protection, very good. And look at that, that was the first one. Warmth. Warmth. So it has a practical use too in keeping us warm and, and dry, like a shower cap. Exactly. And finally, Fernando, I'm looking at you. You might know this one. Yeah. Yeah, so it can, yeah, exactly, that's right. It can be a fashion accessory. That's right, yeah. Okay, and next one. So, what is the point of our helmet or hat, I wonder? Why do we wear them? Well, we've discovered three of them uh, here already. I mean hope, silly me, not helmet. What is the point of our hope? That's right, we can think of hope when we think of a helmet in, in this case as well. So, what is the point? Hmm, it defends the head, just like a hat or a helmet. For soldiers, our hope defends our head. Our hope of heaven defends our soul from the dangerous assaults of sin and Satan. And I've given the analogy here in war. A soldier must never leave their helmet behind. It is ne a necessary piece of equipment for protection. Likewise, a Christian must always take with them their hope wherever they go and never leave it behind. Hmm. So here's a question. It's rhetorical, don't worry. What benefit is our faith or hope without, sorry, our faith without a well-grounded hope? Hmm. Next slide, Jonathan, then. And click again. Our hope, though, is greater than a helmet. And that's important to remember. When a bullet pierces through a helmet, it usually leads to the death of the person. However, when our spiritual helmet is in God, there can be no assault made against him that will endanger our soul. And next one is, don't take the wrong helmet to battle. So just as in life, we have uses for our helmets, um, we don't want to be wearing a shower cap when we go to war. Um, a shower cap is no use when bullets are flying at you. 
So make sure you don't carry on your head a counterfeit helmet. Um, there is a hope that will prove to be a spider's web that can be a danger to us. And that can be found in Job 31, 24, when he's talking about our hope in gold. So those were just a few thoughts on hope when we uh, come to listen to Wally today. I think that's it from memory. Yes, it is. Okay. So on that note, let's sing Cornerstone. married I lived on uh, Eva Terrace top of Woodhouse Hill 
and uh, it wouldn't happen in today's world, but it happened then. There were two girls used to come up, they were eight years of age, they used to come up from near Hunslet Car School uh, to my house, and uh, we'd walk up hand in hand over what was a railway bridge, now it's a motorway bridge, walk up between the cemetery on the left and the um, allotments on the right. And it was Tuesday. Um, for 10 years previous, um, my wife, who wasn't my wife then, but my girlfriend then, Anne, and Maureen Mackley used to run Sunshine Corner on Tuesday night, and they did it for 10 years. And then I took over and did it for the next 10 years. So these two girls uh, were coming with me to Sunshine Corner. And one of them was called Joyce Sellers. And the other one was uh, who we met there at the, Sunday school, at the Sunshine Corner was somebody called Christine Whiteley. They now call her Christine Pollock. And it's amazing because these are two people who are the fruit of one's labours all those years ago. Joyce eventually married a, a young man from Leeds who became a vicar and God has used her tremendously over so many years now. She really has been a, a blessing. She has five children and grandchildren and recently they, uh, they retired and moved uh, out of London. And uh, she sent me a Christmas card, which is normal. And in the early days of the COVID, she felt that God had gave her a verse. She printed it up on the fridge and in a car, and she's held on ever since. And the verse is Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Last Sunday, I got a phone call uh, from somebody that I worked with all those years ago. Uh, he and his wife, I had the privilege of leading them both to Christ. And uh, he informed me on Sunday that I actually married them 56 years ago. So that was a thrill that they also have stood the test of time. At a cabinet meeting in the darkest days of the war, just after France had capitulated, Mr. Churchill outlined the situation in its starkest colours. Quite literally, Britain stood alone. There was a silence when he had finished speaking, and on the faces of some of those was written despair, and there were some who would have given up the struggle. Churchill was silent for a moment. Then he looked round at his spirited company. Gentlemen, he said, I find it inspiring. It is easy in the light of experience to despair of oneself. It is easy in the light of events to despair of the world. It is easy to drift into a cynical acceptance of a hopeless or a defeated resignation that neither men nor the world will ever be better. The son, the son of someone I know wrote to his dad just recently and he wrote, Jesus is writing his own story now and we are all part of that story. So in a year of unanswered questions, let us take them up with the Father himself. He loves to be asked. Someone else writing to me this Christmas wrote, Does the road wind uphill all the way? Yes, to the very end. But I am not alone. I stumble onwards and upwards, but my friend will never leave me. This 2000 year, 2020, it certainly feels like an uphill journey. But Jesus said in John 14, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate or comforter to be with you forever. 
I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. And then a promise in Hebrews 13 is that uh, I will never leave you. And two verses about hope. One's from Colossians 1.27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. From the Old Testament. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. That's Jeremiah 29.11. We're coming to the end of a very strange year. And it will end in tears. And the new year will commence in tears, not the cry ones. With recent news from Boris, it can seem as though someone is turning the light out on us and on the world. But the light that is in Jesus will never be extinguished. The husband of a good friend of mine uh, from student days uh, wrote a book this year. And this is a sentence from it about finding meaning in the frightening turmoil of the organised insanity of our world today. I believe it was King George VI in his Christmas message at the outbreak of the last war said, put your hand into the hand of God. That will be to you better than light and safer than a known way. They say that love is all around. Well, a line from a carol, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in you tonight. So if love is all around, so is fear. And biblical hope has a solid foundation. On the cross, Jesus took on death and beat it. And death produces the greatest fear. And by his death, Jesus said, He frees those who all their lives were held in slavery or bondage to the fear of death. Hebrews 2. There is a hope that we all experience. It's not the biblical hope I've just been talking about, which is solid and sure. But we all say things like this. I hope this will happen. I hope that will happen, etc. One of my hopes for the fellowship is expressed in Micah 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God? My hope because I detect a want of kindness amongst us. I sense that kindness is scarce scarce and rare in short supply, which I believe is a real cause of sadness in God's heart. The person I lived with for over 50 years was the epitome of kindness. I have a daughter who is kind and it is so attractive. When in conversation with young uh, swimming pool staff, who often think and talk to me about relationships, I nearly always ask them what ingredients do they want to see in someone or to have in someone who they might be interested in. But it's usually me who mentions someone who is kind, which I link with thoughtfulness and generosity of spirit. The hope that is in Jesus should make it easy for kindness to flourish. After all, it is in the makeup of the fruit of the Spirit referred to in Galatians 5. In the old hymn it says, In loving kindness Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim, and from the death, depths of sin and shame, through grace, He lifted me. Kindness is so attractive. And I have been the recipient of such kindness since March through Janet and Paul 
which is thrilling in the way they've delivered to my home uh, right through that period. It couldn't have been bettered. But in general, from my perception, it does not seem to feature high on the prior priorities of our agenda towards one another. Whilst kindness, like winsomeness, are very attractive, lack of such leaves people cold and indifferent to the things of God. There is a potential in 2021 to find us without hope and without God in the world. That's Ephesians 2.12. There is also a pretension in 2021 when in Christ Jesus to abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Colossians 1.27 And there is a potential for hope not only to be our experience, it can be real because the God of hope he said, has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which he has given us. The evidence that love has been poured in will be witnessed and underlined and made clear when kindness flows out. If God's love is poured out with this kindness, with this power, as it says through Micah, because it's what God's require of us. God requires that we do justice and that we walk humbly and that we manifest kindness. It's his requirement. When I was a student, there was a, a, there's a motto, it, college doesn't exist now, but in Latin on the badge, it was faithful to God. And be, at the beginning of every term, we sang the same hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And one of the verses says, Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth, thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. And my prayer for each one of us is may the God of all hope fill you with all joy in believing. Amen. We are now going to sing uh, two songs together. Hark the Herald Angels Sings and then Christians Awake to Finish.
Jesus we thank you because you came into a world which was equally dark and you took on everything Covid wasn't there but everything else was thrown at you and it's amazing that you maintain such gentleness such love, such kindness that you shone in a dark place even though they tried to extinguish you We realise, left to our own resources, we cannot make any of the requirements or standards which your word sets. But we do believe, by the gracious work of your Holy Spirit, it will be possible for us to become a better people, a different people. And it does say about those in the early days how they love one another, And may that be an amazing experience for us as we emerge from this brutal time where love becomes absolutely clear and kindness absolutely obvious. And in all this, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you will be lifted up amongst us as a people, that the more we gaze upon you, we will become like you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Is that-